Hi everyone, Kelvin here from London, welcome. Um, got an incredible bit of kit from the real high-end world of hi-fi, the like of which I wouldn't normally ever get to hear or play, you know, would never get my hands on, yeah? So I'm gonna review this and talk about how brilliant it sounds and also how it, how expensive kit like this uh, works with other equipment because I've had a few surprises really about partnering this and I learned a few things about high end which I didn't know or properly have in my mind you know in great certainty so I'll quickly tell you what it is and then we'll get into that stuff when I say high end this brand new 2006 was eight thousand pounds it's american maybe it was a bit cheaper in america i don't know someone can tell me it is audio research cd7 it's got six vowels in it which that's the thing that i would say gives it a uniqueness or something better than an all transistor thing which you know you probably understand that you know the speed purity agility that you get with valves really turns this into a thing that doesn't sound like a cd player it's it sounds like good vinyl it sounds like really good vinyl but i'll go into detail in a sec but i'll just show you how it works um it's nothing you know fairly basic stuff here at the back it's got balanced outputs uh rca digital coaxial it mounts from the top so if you watch this screen here that goes off when i open it up it has this little uh puck i think they call that a puck it's magnetized uh and you've got your cd crystal logic steely dan i was listening to john martin Sound is so good. Solid Air, that whole album. It's just sounded fantastic. Um, you put that puck back on there, and then this will come back on. Just normal stuff, you know. Weighs a ton, 18 kilograms, something like that, you know. So this was eight thousand pounds new, and from what I can tell, if you want to buy one of these today you're going to land up paying about two, two and a half thousand pounds. So that might be three thousand uh, US dollars. I mean, it's 15 years old. It might last another, might carry on working great for 20 years, 25, 30 even. Who knows? Who knows? You know, but obviously when you're spending large amounts of money on complex uh, equipment like that, you know, there's that element of risk. Anyway, uh, what should we talk about here? So let's do, okay, I'll do the equipment and then I'll do the sound. So I, what I discovered actually was because this goes down so low frequency wise and the bass is just shockingly good, yeah. You've got to have an amp that will go down really low, you know, and some amps just don't go really low i landed up using the power amp section of my sansui 8 deluxe that's a receiver sansui receiver quite a flashy looking thing an incredible looking thing which actually i just sold uh and that had the real low bass grip which i didn't really know it had I didn't really know it had because I never got to exploit it with a bit of equipment that has control down that low, you know? So this is that this is one of the interesting things that comes up with this high-end gear. Uh, so sorry, yeah, I had the Sansuri, I had Lin Wakanda preamp, and I used a KEF 105, so those great big three-way KEFs. I also used the Monitor Audio MA4 Mark II which are reasonably inexpensive vintage speakers are like 150, 200 pounds. 
but they get went down low and they've got a big base they had good control down low and they, they actually sounded very sweet very nice it was a kind of a nice uh match sound wise so i put a cd in the first thing i got was grip bass grip was like you never heard i've never heard this kind of bass grip i never heard of that much detail right down low i just never you know the the thrum of the strings everything this machine you know i didn't know it could be this good well just every th instrument you will hear it start and stop whatever it's doing you will hear all the contour changes in productions you know record productions the change from the verse to the chorus which you start getting in nice hi-fi just the whole sort of you know the different instruments doing different things changes the sort of space that's in but you know uh you just hear goddamn everything and the mid-range is sweet and articulate and fast because it's got valves in it it's those valves that are making it sound like a brilliant turntable it's not sounding like a CD player. It doesn't sound slow. CD players always have this sense of slowness to me. And good vinyl has that speed in the middle. And the valves anyway, you know, whatever is going on in here, <laughs> it sounds like brilliant, fast moving, articulate, detailed. I mean, everything's great. The, mid, the top end is if ethereal the voices are dead on the, you know every the tone of all the instruments are dead on and the bass grip in the bottom is like nothing else and i guess that's what you get when you spend i mean if that was eight thousand pounds new night 2006 it'd be like twenty thousand pounds now i mean it would it could even be more you know so you know you won't expect it to have anything wrong with it and it doesn't it does not. Now, other interesting things that came up. I put these with those uh, Kef LS 50s. I put them with Elax. I put them with all sorts of things. There's no point in putting this into a small box. From what I can tell, you know, I haven't heard, a, you know, the £3,000 speaker with a bass radiator at the back. I'd rather have a big £3,000 speaker, but You've got a huge vista coming out of here with real low detail. I'm saying you want the biggest, bestest speakers that go down low and you will have a, you know, so it's a new dimension. You know, this is what something this high end will do for you. You've got to have the equipment. Little speakers sounded OK. It was almost like they were overloaded with detail. They couldn't resolve the my, the ton of minutiae. They couldn't really do it. Those big kefs did it. Good. But none of these little speakers, LS35A, you know, everyone says they're great and they are. No. The, the low bass they were getting, they couldn't cope with it at all. So it was all lost, you know. So, you know, for me... Or I would just say, you just got to be big. It's got to be big. No point if it's small. You're not going to utilise what this can do, you know. Um, worth mentioning, I did review the other day a Sony CD player. It was a pretty uh, classy bit of kit. X7 ESD, which sells for about £1,000 second hand. Well... It's, there's no question, there's no doubt, this is a totally superior bit of kit. That Sony sounded, you know, I thought it sounded good. I thought it sounded really good. Then I heard this and I go, that Sony now seems like a very sort of transistory and ordinary machine, you know? Um, and it's it's a class bit of uh, machinery that Sony, but this thing I don't know if it could get. I can't believe it could get more than like a couple of percent better. 
I, I'm really going to doubt that. I mean, I would think you're hitting the, the very top of how much better it could get. I mean, hopefully in some way, someday I'll be proved wrong, but in my estimation, it'd just be, you know, that much my guess. I just can't believe, I can't imagine it getting significantly better than this. Interesting point, music. Are you listening to music on here? I found I'm going for the great musicianships, yeah? I don't want to hear pop music. I don't want to hear Bruce Springsteen. I don't want to hear Neil Young. I don't want to hear Alison Krauss even. It's kind of they're they're straightforward in their the musicianship. I want to hear Miles Davis. I listen to the John Martin Solid Air. They're all dynamite. The musicians are dynamite on there, and you get all that f fine interplay between them that doesn't really come off otherwise but i just found that it totally changed what i wanted to hear and i didn't want to hear anything poppy or simple nothing not like that i wanted because suddenly you got an insight into the musicianship you know big speakers valves feeling real that valve gives you that edge of real reality that edge of in the room fantastic detail ethereal top end the tightest grippiest most accurate low end um i've ever heard so you know i'd love to buy this it's not mine it's got to go back um personally i'd have it for a grand that's what i would but i'm i as you, you may know if you see me on this channel i have trouble spending a ton of money like a thousand pounds on anything but for a thousand pounds, I would buy this today, you know. Um, okay, I think that's about it. So I hope that was interesting as, you know, a trip into the high end world revealed some things that I, I kind of hadn't quite got my a handle on. So um, if you don't know lots of other reviews on my channel, uh, please.